Outdoors with Tom Grunewald is brought to you in part by HT Premium Ice Tackle and by Polar Fire, advanced cold weather clothing systems, and these other fine sponsors. Mobridge, your all-season fishing destination. Hey, and welcome back to Tom Grunewald Outdoors. We're on South Dakota's Lake Oahe. We're going to be fishing with Dennis Foster with HT's magnetic polar pop-up tip-ups, trying to catch some pike, walleyes, and mixed bag. Hard to say. We're back on a back bay, or a creek arm here, of Lake Oahe. Now, uh, it's been a very, very mild season, and a lot of the lake is open or just frozen over. Back on this bay here, we've got, oh, a good five or six inches, so we're in pretty good shape. You know, this is a really a fascinating area. It's a huge, huge body of water. It's actually the third reservoir on the Mississippi River. Coming down, you got Fort Peck, Garrison in North Dakota, and then you get in here into South Dakota, and it's, a, it's obviously South Dakota's biggest body of water when you add up all the acreage. I have no idea how to say uh, what the total number of acres is, but it's huge water. That means big potential for big fish. Certainly numbers of fish, a lot of recruitment. Uh, pretty exciting fishery, and we're really looking forward to this. These polar pop-ups are a little different style of fishing. You know, we fish a lot of polars, polar therms, that sort of thing. These magnetic tip-ups are unique. Dennis has some special uh, methods, some special rigging, some things like that that he uses. We're gonna share with you here today. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just show you some of the basics of that tip up here in a little bit. So, hey, come and join us. We're gonna try to see what we can do catching some tip-up fish out here on South Dakota's Lake Oahe. Dennis, this is a huge body of water, and we're obviously limited to where we can fish because of the ice conditions this year. How do you determine where to start looking for fish on a body of water like this? What, uh, what we're trying to accomplish today is we're actually in one of the major river arms of Oahe, which is a Grand River arm near the town of Mobridge. Uh, it's a major spawning arm. These fish will start showing up late summer, early fall, so we know there's a high population of fish here, also obviously big females. In addition to that, uh, we're actually in a crick arm off of the Grand River, so that's going to help us with our ice conditions. It's not as exposed to the wind, and we're probably sitting on seven, eight inches of ice here. Main body of the Missouri River on Oahe is open. Yeah. Uh, so we have safe ice conditions. We obviously have some fish to work with here. We mm -hmm. have some structure behind us. Is a uh, fairly major point of the crick arm itself that's coming out. What we're doing is we're just following this broad point out. Okay. Uh, there's probably 12 foot of water up in the shallowest. We're going to search for about 40 foot of water where it tapers off into the old creek channel itself. Okay, all right. So we're just going to spread our stuff all along here, let the fish tell us where they're at. We're going to go from deep to shallow, jig holes in between, and maybe uh, tighten it up and concentrate in those areas. So he's going to be ready as soon as you get here. He's right below me. Try to line him up for you. He's coming in decent right now. He's coming from underneath. Ooh. That's a big fish. Yes, it is. That bobber is it? There we go. Yep, help me with that line if you can. He's behaving pretty good for as big as he is at this point. As long as we don't push him too hard, I don't think he knows he's in danger. Okay, he's coming back the other way now. Sorry, I'm coming. Off, yep, yep, there you go. Yep, good job. I'm right on the leader. He's going to come. Slowly turn the head. Oh boy, is that, oh that might people, be 20. I'm telling you, this is, this is probably in the neighborhood of 15, maybe the 20 pound pike. Uh, big, big snout, big head. And the fish just keeps uh, making runs. As soon as she sees us, and the head gets it's up. right here, Tom. She dives right back down. Gaff it. I'll wrestle it up. It's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> It's not getting away. Yes, I thought you were going to go down the hole. I would have. 
<laughs> Can I steal your line? <laughs> this is why we come out here to South Dakota, folks. Look at look at the size of this fish. You can tell the forage in these lakes is so tremendous. They just fill. Just look at the belly on that fish. Look how thick bodied that is. I'd, I'd say we're probably talking. That's probably a 20 pound pike right there. Yep. I would guess it's going to push it. Look at the show the head and everything. You know they do. They talk about big pike, and you hear people call them gators. You just turn his head once toward the camera. There. I'm trying to. It's yeah. hard to hold. <laughs> If you look at the back side of the head of this fish, it looks just like a big alligator. You can tell why they do that. Wow. I'm going to try to drop down here. I'm going to try an orange spoon. Um, I had a tube jig on, and I had a couple follows. And when I switched over to that Fergie spoon earlier, I caught a pike. And uh, so I'm trying this orange spoon out. There's a fish down there. Look at that. So I'm going to tease him to come up here. There he is. There he is. Got him. I don't feel like a bad fish either. Well, he just came up and he was following that spoon. He followed up about two feet, which is what you want. That's the uh, sign of a good active fish. Swivel. It's a walleye, too. Come on, fish. All right. All right. Came up and he cranked on that uh, on that orange spoon. It's a little Cleo, orange and uh, silver, and just spanked that bait. And again, I, I saw him coming in. He was down kind of low, and uh, he came flying off the bottom just like a, a, a rocket ship, shooting up at that bait. And when he got on it, he kind of stopped. He paused a little bit. I started working it up, and I came up maybe a foot, foot and a half, and he banged it. A nice walleye. You know, and again, this is uh, this is the name of the game. I mean, I've got the tip-up set out there. Um, Dennis is over here, and uh, we decided to just put down um, two jig rods just to kind of mix things up. Maybe the action of the lures might help attract these fish um, and bring them in toward the tip-ups. And hey, picked up a couple bonus fish. Nice eye, nice eye. Hey, I just grabbed one of uh, Dennis's polar pop-up tip-ups here, and I'd really like to show you just some of the features of this tip-up. And really, the, the beauty of it is, first of all, it's a fairly high-profile tip-up with this long tube. The uh, tube sticks up. It's easy to see, even in deep snow. And when the flags uh, pop up here, your signaling device, that comes up even further. So it's really a great unit. You can see it in a distance, and if you're fishing in deeper snow, um, it's easy to find and uh, check for bites. Another thing that's really nice about the, the pop-ups is that this tube is completely enclosed and sealed. There's no lubricants or anything in here, and it's completely freeze-proof. It's an underwater spool, just like most of our standard polar-type tip-ups, which means that the line won't freeze. And all I have to do to set this is align the magnet with the bottom of the tube, which also has the bottom of the shaft aligned on it. And when those two magnets are lined up, that holds the shaft in place. Now when a fish bites and the spool turns, the flag pops up. It's just that simple. No mechanical devices to freeze up, no problems with wind, no problems with anything. Just perfect, simple, easy to use system. And Dennis has taken his tip-ups, he's modified these in a number of ways. I'm gonna let him share those with you in a moment just to make the tip-up even more um, effective uh, so you can really see those bites. But this is a super system. If you do a lot of ice fishing, it's great multi-species. Oh, nice walleye! All right! <laughs> All that right! That one got a dorsal fin right to the boat and the index finger. Ouch! But you grabbed him. Okay. Whatever it takes to make it work, right? Yeah. <laughs> now there's a nice walleye. That's a decent sized fish right there. Yeah, yeah this is pretty. It's not overly fat. I'm going to guess it's just a really, really big male. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to guess. Yep. And still, you know, here we are again. Yep. You know, not that deep, and it's uh, it's not nighttime, wow. bright sun, nice wildlife. Oh gosh, it's got to be. I'm going to do my hand thing. If you want to hold the line away. Sure. 26, 27. 25. Ha, 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 ha.
These are some of the modifications to the uh, polar magnetic uh, pop-up. First of all, I'm going to start from the bottom up. This is a premium hook. It's a, it's a wide-gapped hook, which helps when fishing large chubs, which I do exclusively. I think that does help attract some bigger fish on a consistent basis. We're running a mono leader, typically 10, 12, maybe up to 15 pounds. You can also go to Floro. In the Dakotas where, where I reside and fish mostly, we have a lot of pike that does help us get some of those in. One thing that does help this out quite a bit, you'll see I have a bead there, and then I've got a very light attractor, and that's a Max Lure Smile Blade. And what that'll do is flip around as that chub swims around. It adds just a little bit of flash, in addition to color, and it's a, it's a great attractor. Coming on and up the line, we're gonna to go to a number four split shot. That's enough to, to hold the bait down, but not subdue it. Uh, especially in deeper water, it's nice to get it down quickly. We have a line marker which, which marks our depth. Continuing on, this all goes into a snap swivel, which goes into a main line of braided line. This is a 65 pound super line that's braided. And then below that, we have that attached to a mono backing that attaches directly to the spool. What that does is pre prevent that line from slipping around there. Another important note here is what I do is these come equipped with a spring. I remove that. I also put uh, their product, which is called Blue Lube, on there. And what that does is allow that spool to turn very, very freely. It does not wash off. So when that fish wants to take it, it just spins it out. Very simple and easy. Another nice thing is this orange dot. This helps indicate what that fish is doing. You can see how he's, he's turning that. On up the line, a lot of the fishing we do is twilight fishing and into the dark. I take and put reflective tape on the body of the magnetic pop-up itself and also on the bite indicator, which is this tube that comes up. I use two different colors. This allows me to see them at, at night, find them. It also keeps the snowmobilers from running them over. It comes up, I have the different color, indicates I've got a bite. All you need is a flashlight, take and pan out amongst all your set of uh, pop-ups. Very easy to check to see if you have bites. You don't need to get up and walk to each one. Look at this, Dennis. It's all the way into your um, backing, way, way back. All that line is out. Tie good knots? Ah, uh, we're gonna find out. It's making me nervous. Oh, we got him. This one's a little nicer. There's a little more weight here. Well, we passed your knot, so you're not past the test. It's all up to you now. This one's got a little beef to it, I yep. think. One little tip there, too, is I'm picking this line up for Tom so we don't have a lot of line laying on the ice. Should this fish want to make a big run and happen to catch on a chunk of ice, I could just literally let him run off the spool. They're coming toward me, I had to pull a little faster there. Sorry about that. <laughs> but this helps avoid all those wind knots and everything that you can get otherwise yeah. commonly with a tip up. Help with this big pike, I'm a known northern wrestler, so. Yeah, you're the man. We got the right person here to help us. This is crazy. It's like fishing up on the Saguenay River in Canada. There's the there marker. Here. Close now. And then we gotta play it careful here. If he does run, watch that bobber between your fingers. That can be. I don't like the way that trouble. line. You see why that? Real high, isn't see, it? Yeah, you see how that line's kind of working its way in on the edge yeah, there. there well, go. we got to lay away your leader on this. That helps. He'll move. Oh, hey, it's a catfish! Look at that! Whoa! <laughs> you weren't kidding about mixed bags, were you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is unbelievable. We're catching pike. We're catching walleyes in the same area, and now a catfish. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you a little bit about the weather we're having. I mean, is this is this common out here? As far as the, the most catfish? Thing, yeah, you bet. Uh, you know, I've had times when we're out here targeting walleyes when we've had just as many and sometimes a few more cats in a good day. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing of it is they're in here eating what the pike and the walleyes are eating. You know, they're no <laughs> different. There's a good population. We're back in one of the major river arms of Oahe, which is the Missouri River Impoundment. And then on top of that, we're in a crick arm off of that river arm. Yeah. So these catfish do get towards the back end of these. So sure. Well, look at that. Here. You know, what, well, you hear about people catching catfish through the ice, and, and now we know that it, it can happen. 
Well, this is a lot of fun. I Boy, I, I can't say. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the, uh, the first catfish I've ever caught in South Dakota. <laughs> and I got it through the ice. Nobody's going to believe me. No, this is a lot of fun, folks. Uh, we're talking pike, walleye, now catfish. All these fish are being caught in the same vicinity here and basically on all the same rigs. I mean, it's just really exciting. That ever surprised me. I'm waiting here, I'm thinking I'm gonna get a pike. I wasn't feeling those uh, familiar head shakes like I usually get with those. It wasn't fighting like a walleye. And it taken so much line out, um, but uh, he really, really fought hard. And that's not a bad catfish either. Look oh, at that. By, by no means. And what it does is it just drives home the point of the versatility of this whole system. Yeah. You know, the, the polar magnetics are, are a great uh, tip-up system fishing large chubs, which I think is bringing these fish in. I think it's yeah. a much better bait yeah. than a minnow, minnow on most days. And, uh, All right, so that's what there he is. Let's let this one go, nice and easy. Oh yeah, she's gonna give her. There we go, nice fish. All right. Another cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this just goes to show you anything can happen out here on the ice. Hey, let me tell you, like I always say, nothing beats ice fishing. Nothing. All right, little walleye again. All right. So here uh, we've got that break where we're going from the shallow flat, kind of gradually drops off, and then it hits that actual channel, that flooded channel down here. And that's what we're fishing right now. And that deeper water is where we found the walleyes, which you'd kind of, uh, you'd kind of expect that to be the case on a bright day like this. But um, it's interesting that, uh, you know, we've actually had a lot of shallow water action today, despite the fact that we got bright light, absolutely no snow cover out here whatsoever, and only about, oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six inches of ice. What I would like to show you here with this fish too, Notice how still that walleye is sitting? For some reason, and I had a walleye tournament fisherman show me this, if you grab a walleye by the belly, just kind of rest them up like this, they'll just lay and they will not move around. It's easy to hang on to them then if you want to take a photo or uh, remove the hooks or what have you. Um, I'm not sure why that works, what the reason is for it, but it is true. Um, just kind of grab them gently by the belly, lift them up, and they won't flop around at all while you, uh, you try to work with them. Uh, releasing them, moving the hook, or taking a photo. So it doesn't make a difference what size they are. For some reason, that seems to just make the fish sit still. The system that we're using is largely chub-based, and uh, with any luck at all, I prefer to use chubs. We did have a full bucket of chubs earlier today. The pike have mainly cleaned us out of them, but there is a little trick, and I'll use this when I run out of bait, or at times you can't find a bait shop with chubs, what I'll do is find two of the biggest fat heads that you can find in your bucket. Uh, tip, hook one just as you typically would, up through the bottom of the lips and through the head. That's just a standard fashion. Then what I'll do with the second minnow is I'll take him and I'll turn him upside down. And I'll hook him towards the end of the tail, still in some fleshy parts so it'll hold the hook. And what that'll do is that guy's going to be upside down and he's going to continually try to right himself. In the process, he's going to fight the normally hooked minnow. So what that does, it creates quite a bit of commotion down there and we can get the image of a higher profile bait, a, a bigger profile bait, which can uh, help us out when these fish are keying on the bigger baits. Let's see which direction he's going. Well, there he is. There it is. See the marker? It's off towards you. Oh, okay. Same thing as the last one I just checked, too. That marker was about three feet or so underneath the uh, tip up. And he just dropped it. But it'll sometimes work is we don't want to put 
pressure pressure on them. Sometimes Just tease them a little? Around, yep, and, and make them take off. He's either dropped it or he's laying there with it. Yeah, yeah. The last one I had dropped it. He just took it down like that and stopped. Oh, okay. Got him. All right. Good. 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 Keep coming. <laughs> Any size? A little walleye, maybe. He's not. No. Doing a lot of hits. Oh, no. little northern. All right. Oh, there you go. Well, more action. Hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're starting to. Drop the light a little bit so we might move up a little shallower and, uh, and uh, move some lines in there for walleyes. It's been an awfully great day out here. You know, again, big water. Obviously, there's a lot of fish out here. There's an excellent um, amount of habitat. There's a huge forage base out here to support a tremendous fishery and uh, ability, of course, to produce some trophy fish like we saw with that big pike today. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us here on Tom Grunewald Outdoors. Appreciate you coming along for the ride. Lake Oahe, South Dakota, if you want to try uh, doing a little bit of fishing, pike and walleyes, mixed bag, this yeah. is the place to do it. And the action is hot. If you spin around, we got another one up here. Got another flag. Just keep running. It's it's constant, people. We'll see you again next time on Tom Grunewald Outdoors. Dennis, thank you.